Good evening and welcome back to the world of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly D&D 5th Edition Actual Play Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow or Mortimer Bigsby, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill tonight is playing Rudy Whitaker or Professor Penny Willred, the shifter elder tonight. And Joe Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, or Jack Pluterson, <laughs> the human battle master. Thank you for joining us once again. Kelly and I create all kinds of great content over on YouTube on the Dungeon Dudes channel, which you can check out if you're interested in guides for players and Dungeon Masters alike for your TTRPG role-playing games. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. Or you could check us out as an audio only podcast as well. And with that, let us return to find out the fate of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible, while simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all. The fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Rudy, Sebastian, and Pluto were infiltrating Altbrook University. Posing as students, or in Rudy's case, as a visiting guest lecturer, they investigated around the grounds of all the old university, looking for signs of malfeasance, malpractice, shadowy magics, and more. Following rumors of student disappearances, as well as previous information that they had uncovered about one of the organizations operating on campus, which is the Guild of Conscientious Practice and Scientific Discovery, our heroes resolved to stay on campus late into the night so they could break into the laboratories on campus and discover if anything was hidden below. Having attended a poetry reading, <laughs> um, our heroes were leaving that at around midnight. Crossing the campus quad, a wide grassy field covered in trees with a ancient cobblestone walkway that meets in the center around a great fountain flanked by statues and uh, of fantastic creatures, our heroes heard a cry for help out in the middle of the night. A familiar voice, one resonant of one, Christoph Engelhardt, perhaps, uh, the um, wayward son of the Duke of Altbrook, who is a student on campus as well. Dropping their disguises, our heroes rush across the quad to see the sight of several hunched figures collecting around the fountain at the center of the quad. Over the sound of rustling leaves as the winds blow across the night quad, the sound of crickets chirping in the bushes, you hear the creaking groaning of these monstrosities. They, at first, through the darkness, thought perhaps they were plate armored figures. But it's only then that you saw that the armored plates were riveted into the flesh itself, the metal welded in and bolted into bone. Gobs of weeping, weeping and infected scar tissue pulsate where the bodies of these figures fight against alien metal. But among them is one much larger figure, almost the size of an ogre, clad in swaddling, 
tattered cloths and with elongated claws, the hunched figure stands over a recently opened hole in the earth, a tunnel dug up from the ground where the creatures are scattering out from. As you cross across the quad to catch sight of them, they moan lowly, growling as bone creaks against metal, and they brandish the weapons built into their bodies. Roll for initiative. And I will also have each of you, uh, I'll get your initiatives. Rudy? Nine. Rudy gets a nine. Sebastian? Ten. Okay. Six. <laughs> uh oh. Also, it might be important. I. Did I not wear armor? I believe you were not wearing armor. Did yeah, I'm pretty sure I said. Because uh, I wanted the. You still have Ignatius in your shield, which you were disguising, I believe, as a surfboard and a. Frisbee. Frisbee. No, no, we, we, we agreed at that. Because I wanted surfboard, but you're like, no, we can do sword. But, like, definitely Frisbee. The discus. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I'm definitely not wearing armor. So I've taken my armor off. Uh -oh. It's fine. Oh boy. <laughs> that, 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 that's a big impact. That's a big impact. We will see how this works out Rudy. for you. Rudy. It's all you. Rudy's the tank. Oh, okay. <laughs> Before we got interrupted by the quad monsters, I was hoping that there would be this like you and me being roommates. We accidentally end up on Lover's Peak together, overlooking the city. Um, maybe... We get a little drunk. Okay. Little, little, yeah. <laughs> As you close the distance, the creatures spring into action. Catching sight of the three of you, the hulking figure steps forward, and as it does so, it discorporates into its swaddled cloth, as if the darkness of the night peels it apart. The whistling shadows surge towards Sebastian. It teleports behind you. <laughs> hey, hey, where'd it go? <laughs> oh, it's behind me, isn't it? Yes, it is. And then its claws swing out, and with its massive hands, it wraps its claws around you, Sebastian. Uh, getting a... Um, a 22 and a 23 to hit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you take a total of 31 damage. Cool. You are grappled. Nice. And then, you, uh, Rudy and Pluto, you turn around to see the claws close in around Sebastian and the creature and Sebastian tear apart into a cloud of shadow. No. <gasps> and the creature teleports back to the hole in the ground and begins pulling Sebastian into the hole. Hey. 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 Wait a second. This all happens, I'm there, and then I see the monster disappear, and I'm like, where'd he go? And then I'm in a hole. And then uh. the other creatures charge forth. No. Well, These my plan work. for my first round is out the window. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to have plans for the first round. Those two both have to... Uh, those two both dash. Um, those are their actions. But the other two run up to the unarmored Paluto, <laughs> drawing their enervating blades. It's fine. Mm. So you're looking for a solid 13. <laughs> Well, I did roll a natural one on one of the, the first one's attacks. So it gets a 22 and a 24 to hit. I think I poked him with my chest hair. <laughs> okay. The two hits uh, each do 15 points of damage, and you cannot regain hit points until the start of your next turn. And, and I don't even like hit points. And then there's three more attacks from the other one, which all hit as well for another 45 damage. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Woo. <laughs> Oh man, how's it feel without your armor? I'm bloodied. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are they undead? Um, they, these creatures, as they come closer to you, 
If they are undead, they are very recently dead. The flesh that they are composed of is not skeletal at all. The flesh is still baked into it. So it's not entirely clear whether these creatures are constructs or undead. Hmm. Do they burn from the light of the Helm of Brilliance? These ones do not. Okay. Um, but yeah, the other other one would. Yeah. Um, okay. With that, it is Sebastian's turn. <laughs> um, panicked, I I um, gather myself as I'm being dragged into this hole, and I attempt to thunderstep. Okay. Away. Okay. I have to make a con saving throw. Yes. Okay. I get a 21. So you succeed, which means you'll take half damage, but I still get to teleport. So as I'm being dragged underground, I go and explode outwards yeah. and reappear doing uh, zero is 10. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, so that's going to be 29. Oh, wow. It is a successful save, So, but still decent damage. On 3d10, 29 yeah. is uh, pretty good. Okay. Nice. With that, uh, you escape the clutches of the creature, which um, the thunder bursts the shadowy energy that composes its body apart for a moment, and then it recorporates, and it howls in rage that you've escaped. When I when I explode out, I imagine I discorporate into shadow, and then I recorporate. So it's just a bunch of shadows yeah, popping, popping and, and reforming. There's only room for one shadowy monster here. <laughs> With that, we'll move over to Rudy. Um, okay, so I get my axe out and I say, the Helm of Br Brilliance may not do anything, but let's see if you bleed from my axes. And I just start <laughs> taking swipes. I'm gonna use help from Houdini. It's trying, Get okay, Houdini? It's trying to do stuff. <laughs> 23 to hit. That is a hit. Cleaving through the plate that is fused to the body of this creature, your weapon finds purchase against its fleshy interior. 23 damage. Cool. Take another swipe. Uh, that is 17 to hit. It barely grazes off the armor plating. Okay, um, and then one more there. Oh, same thing. Um, I'm going to action surge. Okay. And just continue to take swipes. Uh, why not? Keep going. Okay, so this one is um, 22 to hit. Finally, a blow manages to break through the armored shell. And that is 28 damage. Okay, that leaves it bloodied. Uh, 21 to hit also gets through. Now that you've found the crack <laughs> yeah. in the armor, just you bring the ax back and forth in the same spot. And that's a um, 30 okay. damage. Uh, and I think there's one more. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nope, nope. That's a, that's a 11. <laughs> As you bring your weapon pounding down on the creature with several, or the rain of blows, it manages to take what it, the, its forearm is armored, and with the last attack, it bats your axe aside and screeches in your face with this metallic sh screech, and spittle comes out from its massive teeth uh, toward towards you. I've been spit on before, but not by a creature like you. The, these, the way these creatures are armored, they have these bucket helms similar to Pluto, but the visors are pulled down, and you can just see their fleshy mouths underneath, but there's no visible way that, it's not clear how they're seen because mm -hmm. their their masks, uh, the armor of their helmet pulls down like a mask over their faces. Mm -hmm. With that, we go to Pluto. Ow, I'm bleeding, a lot of bleeding, but I'm gonna dig deep and I'm going to respond in kind to these uh, awful armored creatures. Uh, with Ignatius in hand, um, I get a 18. Ignatius strikes true. Yes. 25 damage. Okay. And then um, uh, again for like 29 to hit. So I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna hit the one on the left. Uh, five, okay. seven, eight. 28 damage. It is bloodied. And I continue my assault, uh, getting a, a 21 to hit. Mm-hmm. 
um, for 30 damage. Ignatius flashes and flares as your attacks carve through the armored shell of this creature. Chunks of its armor plating fly off, revealing the flesh underneath. And as you carve into its body, you can see that in places its rib cage has been replaced by metal framing and its internal organs themselves are contained within glass vials and jars as if someone has completely rebuilt the insides of this person. And I'm going to try something. I don't know if it's a smart idea, but I'm going to action surge. <laughs> and I'm going to cast daylight from the Helm of Brilliance on okay. the Helm of Brilliance. Okay. As the light glares out, um, you can see that the brilliant flash of light causes the shadowy figure. It howls and recoils from, from the daylight. The cloak of shadow that it was wearing dissipates by the yes. by, the brilliant light of the Helm of Brilliance. Ah, uh, <laughs> Sebastian's in the back going, ah! It burns. <laughs> my shadowy shield. I have my own shadowy shield. Both Anything me and the monster react the same way. <laughs> um, that is, um, and then I'm gonna stand, uh, stand against these. Uh, actually, yeah, uh, make a DC uh, 18 uh, strength save. I fail. <laughs> um, he's gonna drop his sword. Okay. Um, his sword is his arm. <laughs> Would you like to choose another maneuver? Because their weapons are built into their body. Um, I uh, he's going to. Yeah, you you would have been able to. I I, I thought I'd describe that clearly. I chop but his yeah. arm off. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't quite work that way. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to do uh, then a trip. Okay. A trip. Okay, so he falls prone and takes how much extra damage? Um, eight damage. Okay, not quite destroyed, but almost. Oh, so close. Okay, um, in that case, we go to the top of the round. All of you can roll me a d6. Six. 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 This four. Okay, with the brilliant flash of light, you realize that several of the people around campus have now seen this flash of light bear out in the middle of the night. And seeing the scene happening of fighting, you hear voices cry out, somebody get help, call the guards, there's a fight. But in the midst of that, Several of the gawkers begin running close to see what's happening. Yeah. Idiots. <laughs> no! I don't know. More civilians to save. <laughs> Go away! Yeah. Uh -oh. But the large shadow creature recoils at the sight of the light and it clamors into the hole. However, the other creatures press their attack. Uh oh. First one stands up from prone and attacks Pluto. I'm gonna cast shield. Okay. Um, Give which me is a that solid reason? eight? <laughs> okay. Well, that actually causes uh, all the attacks to miss. Yes. Yay! Thank you. Uh, the second one, though, is also going to attack. Um, and the shield does manage to block one of those attacks, but you still take two hits for 15 damage each. Ouch. Now, Ow. Rudy, the others are going to, um, and then both of them are going to circle around to flank, uh, like as if they're they're trying to surround you mm. both. Um, Rudy, one is going to just take a swipe at Houdini. <gasps> Uh, getting a 20 to hit. Oh, yeah. Cutting Houdini down. Poof. And then it makes its other two attacks against you. Uh, getting a critical hit and a 14. Um, I'm going to shield the 14. Uh, Do you need to shield the 14? I mean, I oh, could, yeah. I could take the damage. Oh, wait, no, sorry. The what am I saying? No, 
AC, 19. Okay. No, it doesn't hit. Yeah. The, <laughs> Sorry. The, the crit though does a total of 23 points of necrotic damage. Oh. How many? 23? 23. And then three more attacks come in on you. Um, I'm thinking like I'm fucked up. <laughs> the highest is 20. Does that miss with the shield up? Uh, My AC is 19, so no. That hits. So I guess if I shield, I will miss that one. Do you want? Okay. Yeah, the high so two miss flat out, and I, then I do get dig in. You know what? I'll let it hit. I'll, okay. let, I'll save my spell slots. It's another right 15 damage, and you cannot regain hit points until the start of the, the skeleton's next turn. Oh. Uh, the sorry, the creature's next turn. Um, Sebastian. Um, backing up. I'm going to I, I. I'm like time to put these guys through the blender, and I hold out both my hands. And Pluto and Rudy's shadows leap up and kind of wrap around them, and I'm going to twin haste. Oh, 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 oh yeah! And they are now imbued with shadowy speed. Oh, that's that's gonna be brutal. Give me some of that. Give me some of that. Does any of that come with health? <laughs> uh, no. But I knew that, but I just I can't even retain. Um, if you guys want to know, it does give you a plus two bonus to your AC, mm -hmm. your speed is doubled, you have an advantage on dexterity saving throws, and you get an additional action on each turn that you can use to attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object. Woo! Keep casting daily. And then I'm going to fly Crowley in to give Pluto advantage on one of these dudes. Nice. Alrighty. Rudy, it's your turn. All right, so I get three plus my one because I'm going to use the attack. Yeah. So four, four shots. I'm going to go for the bloody guy first, and that's a twenty-two to hit. It's a hit. For um, twenty-nine damage. The blade cuts right through the midsection of the creature, bisecting it in in half, top to bottom, and he falls over which would trigger your bonus action attack with Great Weapon I was gonna Master. say, I finally oh, remembered it this time. Yeah. So, so you're gonna be able to make four more attacks. Four still. more attacks on, Go. and I turn to the guy beside <laughs> me with the brilliant light of daylight shining on me. Uh, yeah, that's 20 to hit. I'm just gonna, hit. I'm gonna roll. Uh, that's not a hit. Um, that was a three on the die. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. That's a four on the die, so no. Um, that is a 14 on the die, or sorry, on the total. So okay, one. <laughs> as you cleave through the first one, um, the second one narrowly comes moves out, out of the way, just getting caught. I see that's a one it's damage. A one, yeah, it's a 19 damage. You just graze for your weapon. It's still a savage attack, but it, it just grazes it. Does, does the <laughs> the light blind the you? The light is blinding. I'm like, yeah, oh. I think I need concentration checks for that light, anyways. Uh, actually, I don't think it is a. I was okay. gonna check to see if if I couldn't. Um, is oh, is daylight not concentration? I'm... No, I was checking because I wasn't sure if uh, I could have. Uh, oh yeah, it's not concentration. Okay. I like this contrast of you shedding brilliant daylight while I'm like casting shadows. It's it's <laughs> not blinded. Okay. And sh you're covered in shadowy it's, magic, it's but you're also blinded by the light. The <laughs> and I begin my. First, I'm gonna. Okay, I crit. <laughs> Woo! Mr. Mr. Uh, survives the first onslaught. You also uh, have advantage, but you can use that advantage on. maybe on your next attack. <laughs> You're helping the other one. Okay. Um, oh my god. Like 50 some damage. Flaring with <laughs> radiant energy. You drive Ignatius into the into the body of this creature. It flares with with holy energy, burning away the flesh that composes his body, leaving a heaping hunk of scrap metal on the ground. And then I turn to the other one <laughs> and uh, begin my advantage. Um I get a twenty-two to hit. Nice, that is it. And then um, a, oh, so close, uh, a, a 32 to hit, and a 32 to hit. All three hit. So that's with my hasted attack. 29 damage, 33 damage. Okay. Do not die. Uh, 23 damage, and uh, yeah, make a, make a, a strength save, DC 18. 
I fail. Um, he is also going to fall on the ground and take uh, an additional uh, eight damage. And he's not going to get up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. God. God. And so I trip him on the ground and I do this. I do the drive through his chest and 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 hold it just enough to burn hmm. the flesh away once more. Um, howling out, the final creature takes its weapon, drives it into its own jaw as it rips into its stomach and pulls out the jars that are inside, causing a chain reaction as its body explodes. <gasps> you can all make dexterity saving throws. With advantage. Yeah, you guys, you two have advantage. What do you got? 23. 20? 12. 22. Uh, you both succeed. Uh, so it's going to be a grand total of 35 acid damage, uh, half on a successful save. I impose my shield. I dive back and <laughs> lift it up <laughs> as the acid. spray of acid and gore uh, wrecks its body. I have to make a concentration check, I think. Yes. Um, that would be DC uh, 18. Nope. Haste goes down. Which means these two are stunned for a turn. <laughs> but this guy's dead. Yes. I'm feeling explodes. quite sleepy. So I'm just going to lay down on the ground right I'm now. I'm focusing on you two, and then the explosion happens, and I just get acid yeah. knocked <laughs> off my feet. Your shadows return to normal, and you're both like, oh. Uh, and I'm like on the ground, just like, um, The massive explosion caused just a few of the bystanders to hesitate as several of the other students you can hear the huddle of people gathering to discuss what's just transpired. How big is it? Like, how big was the acid explosion? About the size of a fireball. Ooh. So, like, n none of the the people got. Uh, no, dangerous. they weren't close enough. Okay, people okay. hadn't gotten that close yet. Okay. But you can also roll me another set of d sixes. Uh oh. Five. One. Two. Okay. Smash Crow stands up. Wiping acid off of him, looks out at the crowd of people. Good evening, my name's Sebastian Crow. There is nothing to see here. Nothing at all. We're gonna go into this hole. Go back to your dorms. Sebastian, they're gonna they're gonna know your name. That's like his favorite thing to do, tell people. What? They don't know who I am. I thought everybody knows who you are. What? Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> but they're gonna know that. We're here looking into something. Why would they know right? that? I'm not who I was. I'm not. No, I know. They're not gonna know if they know you're connected to the king. They're gonna know that the king is looking into something here, right? Oh yeah, that she definitely has a point. On. It's far too late. If they, <laughs> if they know Sebastian Crow. Yeah, maybe stop. <laughs> Let's see. We're investigating nothing. <laughs> We just wanted to see the school this evening, and there were monsters in your courtyard, which seems unusual. He's considering attending. He wants to see what, make it, I, what he could learn. I would like to attend normal school for people who aren't as cool as magic users. Right, I wanted to see what it was all about. Mature student. I'm a mature student. I get a 28 on my deception roll as I slowly walk backwards into this shrub. <laughs> and disappear. Several of the assembled people have so someone asks, are you okay? Are any of you hurt? Do you need any medical attention? I'm sizzling and, and Pluto's like bleeding profusely. <laughs> no, we're fine. <sighs> we're we're f go go away. Are are you are you sure? He looks really beat up. You need to quarantine the area. There could be more acid. Okay, give me a persuasion check. Yeah. <laughs> With commanding presence, I get a 14, 13. The, the, some of the people are like, oh, there could be more acid, but you need help, don't you? No, no, I'm fine. These Wait. are tattoos. Are you offering <laughs> magic supply? Are you, do, can you heal him? I've got some band-aids, um, bandages. Will those legit help, or is this like, a, is it's, this not an actual? They're, they're like, we're some of the medical students. We could certainly help. Yeah. No, we, we have supplies. Have we don't have time. We, we have, have to, go to the chase 
Nothing. There's n <laughs> there's not a giant monster in this hole that we need to chase. And I just yell out, if you know what's good for you, you'll get out of here right now. Give me an intimidation check. <laughs> Deception, persuasion, intimidation. It's great. Eleven. Uh, they're, they're, they're like, but we live here. We <laughs> If there's monsters here, we're in danger. There are yes, no, you no probably are. Monsters. <laughs> uh, I like that I'm just going full line. It, it, like, it's, no. it seems like the crowd, the more of the crowd is beginning to gather. Uh, can we just get out of here? Is there a, can, you have a more teleportation ability? Perhaps you've all heard of me. <laughs> Hello, students. Would you like to see, actually, we don't have time for this, guys. No, is we there don't a hole time. in the ground where the, the, the shadowy thing went in? Yeah, there, there, there is a hole, and, and some of the people are starting to walk towards oh, the no. hole. Students, <laughs> stop distracting me. Your lives are in danger. I'm Sebastian Crow. I order Did you. Did these creatures come out of that hole? No. Nope. Oh, my. Are they t tunneling under us? We're all going to die. Some people are starting to panic. Wait. <laughs> can, you, can you cover the hole up if we go no. in? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think I am? Somebody who has mold earth? Because I do. <laughs> Is that possible? <laughs> I'm like walking towards the hole and I start like, you just see dirt going. <laughs> as I'm like getting ready to go into it. I'm like, everybody, good night. I'm like motioning for Pluto. I'm and chugging Rudy. a I potion. Jump in. I'm just chugging, like just back to back uh, healing potion. <laughs> As so I walk towards the, 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 the hole. We all hop in and I mold earth it close <laughs> behind us. As I yell, good night. <laughs> Listen to your elders. <laughs> and I'm just like, go to your dorms or they'll be coming after you too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you climb into the hole, into the scary hole that monsters came out of. This is a drug trip. This Closing is just a the way weird behind drug trip. You well. And now we're in pitch blackness. Yes. No, no. I mean, There's I a, can see. It's, it's really bright in this hole. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's super bright. It's annoyingly bright. Wow, it's really bright for underground. Like, have you ever looked into the sun? It's that all the time. Like, yeah. We're just like sprinting. <laughs> like, you need, need to, you need to walk behind us. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. can see in the dark. <laughs> okay. It's the break. Because the hole was dug by the large creature, it's enough that it could fit through it so that it's enough that you can each individually move like single file, but you're not having to crawl on your hands and knees. It descends rather sharply sensibly the creatures climbed up, could climb yeah. so i'm going to need athletic checks from all of you to climb down 21 22 oh <laughs> 19 Whoa. wow Whoa. all righty good job i know i was like ready to fall the freshly dug dirt leads through layers of sediment and rock as you clamber under the university campus. At one point, the tunnel leads past perhaps what, what is the street where there might be part of the aqueduct or the sewer. As you can see the brick walls that the tunnel goes up against, but it hasn't broken through there. You can th continue through in this brightly lit tunnel. <laughs> uh, and as you do, the smell of earth and clay mingles with just the hint of something foul. Once or twice, as you speak, you hear echoes going down the tunnel and perhaps a distant scream. Now it is time for a scene change. So, you clamber down the passage until it opens into a larger chamber that veers off in a couple different directions, just for a moment, as if the creature was trying to dig in a couple different directions to find purchase. In most cases, it coming into contact with tougher rock. The hole then descends deeper along here you can see that the 
area has become much muddier. Whatever aquifer or sewer line you're now underneath, there's leaking water that's seeping into the earth. Mm -hmm. And so there's a trudge in your footsteps as you move through the passage. Uh, I wore my nice boots. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were going to classes, not underground into sewers. Well, you never know where it's going to take you, so you should best be prepared for all situations. I mean, all my boots are nice boots. None of my boots are nice boots. Looking down into the muddy pool, there is a little bit more evidence here that as you look down some of the passages, one does looks like rather than actually having been st the digging stops, it looks like parts of it were collapsed intentionally as if another hole had once been dug in that direction, but then closed off. There are pools of water that mingle with bits of gore and blood. Hmm. Do you think it's worth digging that one out? Use your... Use your move mud or Wait, whatever that spell is called. <laughs> yeah, use your move mud spell that when you studied years to master. Yeah. I can do that. I'll, um, so there's, sorry, there's a passage that's like kind of blocked off. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, so, but it looks like it was dug and then caved in. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to use move mud to uh, try to excavate. Okay. How long do you want to spend doing this? Well, let's see. I can move. This guy moves mud. I, I move <laughs> quite. A, I can move a five foot cube of mud. That's a pretty big cube of okay. mud in six seconds. Okay. So I will try it for about half a minute. Okay. The way that you open up leads into another tunnel that veers off some distance. As you continue down along that path, what you follow along that way keeps going and then it keeps going back up towards the surface i want to like do i see it ascending towards the surface yeah you essentially you you break this off here and it continues as you reopen the passageway the new tunnel that you've unearthed smells older many of it's filled up a lot more with but it still Water. looks like it's dug by the same it, creature. Yes. Yeah. And it veers much further off the campus and then starts making its way towards the surface. How long would it take? I, I don't, we want to go down. We want to, we want to go into this thing's layer, but I want to see, I want to just like poke my head to see where this other exit is. As you, you kind of have a sense of your directions. Give me an investigation check. That's going to be a nine. You'd need to follow it all the way and climb back up to get a sense of... You've kind of lost your sense of direction down here. How long would that take? Mm, and it's going to take a couple minutes. Like, I'm going to say, it, like, climbing down is time-consuming, and climbing, climbing back up it is going to be time-consuming, because now you have climb speed. Can you send Crowley? Real quick? Yeah, I'm going to... Okay. Yeah, that's... Thanks, Plutes. Okay. Um, I, I, I I say, I, oh, not right now, it's not. Oh, yeah, it's Plutes. I say, thanks, Plutes, and then my eyes roll back and I fall into his <laughs> arms and Crowley goes soaring ahead. So you have to catch up a little bit as it goes upwards. But the exit of the tunnel exits amongst several bushes and shrubs and trees, not far from the dormitories. Uh, Crowley, like, bursts out, flies above the tree line, gets a bird's eye view, and then soars back down, comes back to perch on my shoulder, and I come back to. This tunnel is being used to attack the dorms. Hmm. Well, do you think that's where the, the missing people are going? That you heard there were students that were missing. Running on only loose assumptions right now, we have missing students and we have a series of tunnels that are now leading in multiple directions, one of which leads to the dorms, I imagine that what we're going to find is a network of tunnels mm. and possibly a layer of some sort of whatever creature 
is behind this. Network of tunnels. Creature that's scared of light. Can only be one thing. Me. The Queen of Thieves. Oh. I don't think so. Really? It didn't look like the Queen of Thieves. I thought I had it this time. I thought we were on the same page. No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay, yeah, swing and a miss. Keep going. But <laughs> this still doesn't answer a lot of our questions. What does this have to do with the uh, conscientious practice, the chemistry department? Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's still a lot going on here that can't be answered by a monster digging tunnels, can it? Also, did you notice uh, those creatures up there? They had pretty gnarly blades. They uh, had like they were they were they were created. They like, were they put were, together. And and I don't know if did I get similar vibes to the uh, assassin robots that attacked uh, Wilhelm? These were made from people. Oh, true. So these were built from people. <clears throat> You didn't see, you could tell that they were recently killed when you investigated them. If they were killed at all or whatever was going on with them, whether they were dead, undead, constructs, or what was happening. But there, when you looked at them, their wounds of what was done to them, these were people that this was... Someone took uh, these people and did this to them. When I was grabbed by the larger monster, did it feel similar mechanically? Like, did it feel like a person reconstructed, or did it feel? Yes, it yeah? had. It, it felt. It was also obviously much larger and imbued with some sort of energy, but there, there is something about this that screams. Maybe not chemistry or chemistry, whatever it's called, the anatomy. Anatomy and possibly, I mean, with apothecaries, again, they don't get magic, so they they will go to any lengths. I don't know. I I don't really know what they do, but it sounds like taking people apart and putting them back together is something that an apothecary might do. But they were in jars. That they were in. They were putting the body parts in jars and then building them back into this like human construct hybrid. Yeah, but Everett freed. He had a bunch of body parts in jars. Oh. Did you find that out when you were... Uh, I was snoopy, in his office. Snoopy Lupin? Well, when I went to talk to him, he clearly had him on display. He's not mm. afraid to show that that's something he's he's studying and is into. He talks about how he was, um, you know, studying... <clears throat> uh, like, had surgical tools. He had body parts all around. Like, he is an anatomy professor. Yeah, it's a real shame you guys left those corpses up on the surface where now all the panicked people are probably wondering what's going on with them. Whoops. Yeah, I really wanted some of those. I burned a lot of them. <laughs> That's my bad. I mean, they're all covered in acid and... Yeah. Yeah, the acid from the final explosion would have really just, like, harmed what was left of many of the, the other bodies, but there would have been some of them. I'm not worried about it. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Um, um, let's we, get new bodies. We should keep going. Yeah. Uh, Rudy, you first. All right. And, I and I'll start, have the flashlight. Start down. Please. Okay. You enter into a twisting <laughs> network of tunnels. The passages, this only represents a small section of the larger twisting network of tunnels that you are navigating your way through. They branch off, some, sometimes passages being above or going down, crisscrossing and networking. Clearly a creature digging, trying to find ways to go. What are each of you doing as you navigate around these tunnels? I am <clears throat> using prestidigitation to, can I mark? Yeah, make, um, like a mark on the walls, because I want to make sure we're not going well, I was, backwards. I was going to do the same thing. Oh, here. okay. No, no, no. You. We can like, yeah, both, uh, just to make sure like maybe there's like a, a color that I put on a wall or something like that, just to make sure it's like, okay, we know where we're going. Okay. Sebastian, what are you going to do? Um, I mean, that was all, I have mold earth, which can allow me to put colors or shapes on the wall. So I was just, every time we take a turn, I was going to put an arrow pointing like what way we went. 
Okay. Um, just that way there's no backtracking or circling. I'm also, um, while I'm helping Rudy with, with just making sure we don't backtrack, I want to use my ears. I'm listening for any, any, any passageway that has like non-natural sounds coming from it. I'm listening for voices or like, uh, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but like underground sounds different than like yes, structured like wind voices, things that yeah. may indicate that there's an opening on the other way. Yeah. Okay, Pluto, what are you gonna do? Um, I'm actually, as we're going through, I'm just gonna make sure that the 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 tunnel feels stable. So, uh, I do have proficiency in mason's tools. I've built a couple tunnels. <laughs> When? In my youth. My youth, I, I, I did a lot before I met you guys. I had a, a long list of casualties. Casualties? <laughs> yeah. I was very, I knew what I said. Um, <laughs> I've caused a lot of tunnel collapses. Just want to make sure that it looks stable enough. Okay. In this case, Rudy, you can give me a survival check. Sebastian, you can give me a perception check. And Pluto, you can give me an investigation check, but you can add your proficiency bonus from your thieves, from your Mason's tools to it. Woo! 21. Got a nat 20. Seven. 15. Okay. Pluto and Rudy, the two of you are able to ensure that you don't get lost and that you move forward. However, Sebastian's seems to be leading you down every single dead end you possibly can go down. Do you hear that? Guys, it's this way, and I walk right in, like, one <laughs> foot gonna... into a mud wall. Mud wall. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have all of you roll me a d6. Two. Yep. Two. Two. As I'm stuck in the mud wall, I roll a one. Okay. Oh, my face. Sebastian, okay, move yourselves into the middle of the passages. Oh no. Navigating these tunnels, as you are following Sebastian down yet another dead end. Sebastian, you were making the perception checks. Correct? Okay. <laughs> With his head in the mud. Literally. Yeah. The daylight spell runs out. Okay. I can still see. I imagine, I can still I imagine see it. it's a, it's like when it when a when a flashlight's going out, it's like it, it flickers and then yeah. it flickers again and then it just goes. Yeah. Oh, everything just turns shades of gray. Wow. <laughs> and as it flickers out, you hear a low. <laughs> Pluto, was that you? I. Frantically looking around my body. Do I have a moment? Roll for initiative. Oh no! This creature has not surprised you, but unfortunately, with Sebastian being the one leading the perception, you did not detect it tailing you through the tunnels mm -hmm. as it twisted and turned around, this presence haunting your steps. What do we got for initiative? Four. Four for Rudy. Okay. Let's get worse as we go. <laughs> I got 19. 19 for Sebastian. Uh, 15. As the light winks out, not skipping a beat, the creature seizes on its opportunity to attack. Whistling through the darkness, the creature appears behind Paluto ah, yeah. and goes right for that. Like knowing that you are the source of the light, it goes right for you with its piercing claws. Ah! And you can't see it. I can see it because I have blind fighting. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> true. So it doesn't have advantage on the attack roll. It comes up behind me. I... Still gets a 27 and a 24 to hit. Both of those hit. It's gonna be two hit. So they do 31 damage total for each hit. So 62 damage. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And you are grappled. <laughs> and then, as it pulls around you, 
it disappears no! in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Where does it go? That's a great question. Oh! 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 Sebastian! Pluto! <laughs> what do we do? I'm not trusting your directions Sebastian, no more. It's your turn. I'm a man of shadow myself. I can track this. Um, I see the shadows disappear. Mm -hmm. I have dark vision. Does it like leave a trace? Does do I do I can I can I sense anything? Can I hear anything? Can I? Okay. You have two choices. Mm -hmm. You can give me a perception check to try to hear Pluto's screams, or an Arcana check to follow the threads of shadow. The Arcana check will be harder than the perception check. It's up to you to decide which bonus you're going to use. Does it help if I turn on my true sight goggles? Yes, but you need to use the action to turn them right. on. Right. Um, I'm just going to use Arcana. Okay. Pluto's screams mean nothing to me. Uh, that's going to be 20. You succeed. Yeah. It teleported. The th you see the weaving shadow with your dark vision. The rippling through the passages, it moved to the larger chamber further in. I yell to Rudy and I'm like, follow me, trust me. All right. <laughs> Said I wasn't gonna, but. I know. Um, I'm gonna dash. Okay. You dash and there it is in the middle of the chamber <laughs> with Pluto. I burst into the room and I yell, Pluto Jackson, I'm here to rescue you. Please help me. But I'm also out of movement and actions. <laughs> so my turn is- so strangely yeah. to save me. <laughs> I'm trying. I need I need to wait six seconds. <laughs> Do something. One, two. Um, I'm gonna send uh, Crowley into his face to distract him and Crowley starts pecking at the monster. Um, as Crowley comes forward, the creature lashes out with one of its claws and hits Crowley and slashes the bird in half. You really don't like familiars, do they? Just, just reaction murdering my pet? I've taken a spear for a pet before. You, you just killed my bird. All right. Oh yeah, you also entered its reach too. So it makes an opportunity attack against you. Pluto, I'm here to rescue. It gets a 27 to hit. I got like knifed in the gut by its claws. <laughs> 31 damage. Oh gosh. Ah, never mind. Alrighty, with that, Pluto, it is your turn. You are grappled and restrained. I reach into my, uh, I'm gonna assume it's like, like a fun hemp bag. You know, like I'm okay. trying to think of like a college bag that I wore. Like, it's like woven. It's got like the over the shoulder. Yeah, it's got some like pins on it from like, you know, like a concert I went to. And I pull out the drift globe. Ooh. Okay. So I'm gonna say in this case, this creature knows that you've brought out light sources before, and it's actively trying to stop you from manipulating objects. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have us make opposed strength checks. Oh, <laughs> bring it on, tough guy. I'm gonna use lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I, but only because I'm so confident. Um, I get a, is it just straight up strength or athletic? Strength. Uh, I get a 11. I beat you with a 14. No! So it holds you fast um, and you're unable to get down to your pack to grab the drip, the drip globe. Um, is that my action? I'm gonna say that that will count as like one of your break like, like attacks. If you want to try to break out of the grapple, you can have another attempt. Because I am thinking. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably best if I just try to break out of this grapple. Okay. Um, opposed strength stress? Yep. Strength? Uh, athletics, actually. Okay, athletics, uh, I'm getting a 15. You're able to seize the opportunity, though, as it tries to prevent you from grabbing something, you're able to twist your arm and wrangle your way free of its grasp. 
And then I, um, hmm. It's got a reach though, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And it is reactive. So it takes reactions every turn, not just once per round. I'm going to ignite Ignatius. Okay. And the brilliant light flares up and the creature hisses in rage. And I go, uh, 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 stop stabbing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rudy, you see the flashing light, the familiar glow of Ignatius coming from the tunnels ahead. Mm -hmm. It is your turn. Um, <clears throat> I am going to, oh, I can't really do much other than just get there. All right, I'm gonna get there. Okay. <laughs> Dash is my action. And then I'm gonna use my bonus action uh, to second wind and get some health back. Are you gonna go all the way in or stop there? The dash brings her there. I will, okay. yeah, I'll stop there okay. as That's far as I can feet. go. I think we're, um, about, we're about even. Well, you can put me back here. Um, all right. And then I'm just gonna second wind, so 15 I'm, uh, plus. I'm very bloodied. Eight. I got you. 23. Thank you. Well, I might got you. You might die. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The creature is going to press his attack against you. Cornered and seeing the light, it goes for the thing that is most abhorrent to it, attacking Polito twice. A natural one yeah. and a 19. 19 definitely hits. Again, 20 piercing damage and 11 necrotic damage. Oh. You are grappled, but because it didn't hit you both times, you are not restrained. Um. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. Uh, hurting. And uh, because the bright light of Ignatius is right here, it cannot teleport. <laughs> and I, I yes. fall. Does it does it stay as I fall to the ground? Um. Yeah, Ignatius would stay illuminated once lit. Are you reduced to zero? I am. Okay. In this case, I lay at the creature's feet. Stand. Ignatius sheds bright for t for. 40 feet total. The creature is going to see that, that you've dropped down, and it is going to flee, running 40 feet out of the bright light of Ignatius, and then discorporating into shadow again, mm. heading down that open tunnel. Woo! And as it does so, it turns to Sebastian and, and screams at him. <laughs> Bits of acidic spittle fly through the air. So that like what are you gonna do? I run, can I still see the creature or is it gone? It's turned around another bend um, and, upset, and it moved out of the range of the light of Ignatius and then was able to use its shadow jaw once again. Uh, seeing it get out of my view, I immediately turn, lift Pluto up. Uh, <laughs> I got you, buddy. And I take one of his potions because I'm not going to waste mine. And I feed him, feed him great a potion of okay. greater healing. It's great to hear. And Rudy, what are you going to do? And I rub my hand through your hair. Um, seeing that Pluto is going to be okay, I start to... We don't know that. <laughs> I assume. Caspian Prince. <laughs> um, I want to go around the corner and try to start chasing it down. And I say, we've got it on the run. Okay. Are you dashing? Uh, no, I won't dash. I'll just move regular, like waiting for you guys to kind of like follow me down. <laughs> uh, so you're just going to end your movement there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't see it at this point. It's like shadowy. We've kind of, it, it turns around one more time again, um, the, the passageways. Mm -hmm. So it ran off into the darkness and then has moved down these twisting tunnels. I oh. chased it off. It was scared of me. We have to follow it. We do. Are you okay? No. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Luda, what do you need? Armor. Armor. <laughs> that's probably really bad. I start like slapping mud on you. Uh, yeah, that's working. Let's wait have? for it to dry a little bit. Um, hold on. No, that causes a team. I'm just seeing if I have any, any other. 
What's in my bag of holding? Do I have any? Do you have his armor or is your armor in your room? You know what? We should have just put all of your stuff in my bag of holding. That Retrospect. Would have been, that, that would have been sound thinking. Yeah, I was really thinking, I gotta be honest, I was dressed for a poetry reading tonight. Uh, full, well, full disclosure. I mean, <laughs> if you roll a six on a d6, I will grant you mercy of the benefit of hindsight. <laughs> I. You know what? I'll take it, but I don't need it. I rolled a one. <laughs> okay. I have. Um... It turns out I forgot my boots too. <laughs> I've been my You're sandals. In sandals. Yeah. <laughs> this is really uncomfortable. This is really inappropriate footwear for this type of a game. <laughs> Guys, I swear, I thought it was gonna be super cash. I thought it was super cash. I thought we were just gonna be hanging, drinking some uh, wine out of like a, a, a skin, like a like a like a. This is not. At least you weren't like wearing platforms or heels. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I I'm just gonna go barefoot. I'm just like I already throw the sandals in. <laughs> this is stupid. I have spare chainmail, if you I, want it. Yeah. <laughs> just in my back. You have an extra suit of chainmail that you've just been carrying. Just hanging out. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm carrying a lot. My weight is a lot right now. <laughs> Benefit of hindsight, um, because he rolled a one. I'm gonna say that you didn't bring that okay. with you. Okay. Yeah. You, you don't... It's okay. He's got mud on. Let's go. <laughs> also, yeah. I just want to point out the very obvious advantage is that I don't have a uh, disadvantage on self saves. So we can be sneaky. We're not being sneaky. We don't need to be sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> One time. Um, I'm going to. Are we still in initiative order? Or are we kind of. Not right now. Um, I'm going to use Shadow Walk. Ooh. Finally. Okay. Actually, before we do. Can I heal you? I'm gonna heal you. I would love that. I would, can I use my axe to heal yeah. you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go down for the second time. <laughs> this is how this works. Um, how much healing? Uh, it's the spell of uh, aura of vitality. So I think it's up to 70 in how many minutes? Uh, if you let it run out for the whole minute, it's 70 points of healing that you can distribute. To the party. Do you need healing? Do you need, you need healing? I do need. You healing. could use all seventy. Take all seventy. I'm okay. Are you? Uh, but no, I'll, no I'll, be, I'll be okay. Do you need a healing potion? No. I okay. have healing potions. Healing, healing. A wasting time. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I. I know. I need no healing. I'm on the run. Um, okay. With Ignatius lit though, I'm gonna pull out the drift globe. Okay. And I'm gonna hover it up with Rudy. And um, I'm just going to be ready to go on the. So it's it's not activated yet. It's um, so it's just casting light. Yeah, I think I think it's ju it's just uh, illuminated. It's just giving light. Okay. Just like Ignatius is just giving bright light. But uh, I can turn on daylight with the command word. I'm about to shadow step, and then you turn that on, and I'm like, uh, uh, "Why, Pluto?" Oh, did you want to do stuff? I in step the outside of your light Fine. source, and then I'm going to teleport, um, basically to as far as I can. And I'm gonna like, I'm gonna, I can teleport 120 feet, so I'm gonna be using that ahead of them to try to like catch up to this creature. Okay. As you continue down the passageways, once again, they break off into separate directions. Can you do it for free? Uh, as a bonus action, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you and you have to, it, it has to be to a space that you can see, correct? Teleport um, that you can see that is also in dim light or darkness. Okay. So I, I can't go around corners. Yeah. But yeah. I'm like teleporting like boop, boop, boop. Like basically just, it's faster than me walking. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess gonna, we're dashing at this point to get there, no? I'm gonna reach into my bag, because I have a pretty cool bag, and I'm gonna pull out a baboon. <laughs> okay, you pull out a baboon. And baboons are known for their underground tracking abilities. <laughs> we know I, this, this is fact, of course. I said confidently. <laughs> <laughs> They're not! They're not? <laughs> D and D Beyond is like they they really dropped the ball on this one. Yeah, I'm just gonna we're gonna I, I mean if we're gonna go with the like with canon they are but with with the stats here I guess <laughs> it's just a baboon. Okay, <laughs> that's falling. How are you all proceeding forward in it now? Um, I want to proceed forward, but when we get to the point where we're 
going to go in two directions. I don't want to listen. I want to look and see if there's anywhere well traveled. I know the shadow won't, but I want to okay. see if there's anything else that may have traveled more recently. Sebastian, you think you can still pick up on the threads of shadow if you want to follow this creature? Can I amplify it with my uh, goggles? Yes. Okay, so I strap my goggles on. And you activate them? Activate cool. them. I will give you advantage on your arcana checks. Rudy, I will have you, you can either use survival, nature, or investigation. And Pluto, what are you doing? Um, I'm trying to teach a baboon to look out for shadows. Okay, give me an animal handling check. <laughs> <laughs> um, each of those things is one anyway, so I got a 14. Okay. Yeah. 27. I also get a 14. Okay. I'm really good at teaching baboons tricks. <laughs> Can you teach your robot to love? <laughs> no. No, okay. I'm not good with technology or magic. Rudy and Pluto, unfortunately, the two of you are not very useful in this regard. The baboons are just running everywhere. Well, Sebastian, I'm blown away. With your goggles on and pulling on the threads of this, you are able to follow the traces of magical energy this creature leaves behind. Guys, follow me. Baboon, follow him. And I'm like, I say follow me, and then you just see me go boop. And I like <laughs> appear 120 feet away, and you guys are like trying to keep up. But yeah, I'm following, and I'm like waiting a little bit for them, but basically as soon as I can see them, I'm teleporting to like the next corner following okay. the threads of magic. Continuing through the passageways, eventually, you come to a long, straight section of pass passage where the passage along the ground are several broken stone bricks. Not dissimilar to the brickwork that composes the foundation of one of the, build of the buildings of Altbrook University. The tunnel then ends in an open hole where there's the edges of the brickwork. But then as you peer into the brickwork, instead of looking through into the room, there is a shroud of pinkish purple clouds filling the hole, almost like a curtain of smoke. Pinkish purple. Yes. Your true sight mm -hmm. basically sees this aura of magic. And you can give me our account check. Uh, that's going to be a 14. Okay. Fortunately, that's enough oh, good. to identify. This is a very strange implementation of a private sanctum spell. It's not, no, like, you're familiar with, with private sanctum because you've seen it being used now several times. Mm -hmm. The academy is typically the ones who set these up and usually it's it looks different from this, but you know that basically you can't see into the area of a private sanctum spell from outside it. Nor can divination magic look through it. So someone has, but what you're looking at, the best way that I could describe it is when you see the Academy's version of the private sanctum spell and when you studied it, Sebastian, it's crisp, professional, really well put together. To draw the metaphor, this is the equivalent of like what someone would make in their garage. Mm. So whoever has created this spell doesn't have the experience that an academy mage would have in creating it. And there's something, it's, it's just, it's functional, it works, it just doesn't, it doesn't look the same as a normal implementation of the spell would. I understand all this, and I imagine you two don't quite. So I, I'm looking at it, and then I turn to you guys, and I'm like, amateur hour, am I right? And then I, I go to walk through it. Yeah. It's still effective. I send the baboon first. Okay. Oh. 
the baboon goes in first. Does he come back out? I wave at him. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You walk. can't see through it. The, the private sanctum is like a privacy chain, so you physically can't see through it. You can't send magical sensors through it. You can't hear through it either. So the baboon goes in, and how long do you wait? I wait five seconds, and then I'm gonna walk in. Okay. Who do we think is doing magic down here? I know we were looking for it, but a bunch of wannabes. Clearly, it's it's. I mean, like you said, you mentioned it's amateur, but I can't, I, I don't understand. What you realize, little Sebastian, is that with this spell in place, it would be enough to hide a lot more from the Academy. Yeah, we gotta get ready to uh, take a lot of homework. There's going to be a lot of secrets here, a lot of people doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Mm. And um, I'm not really one to be an academy snitch, but this feels this feels like my old job of hunting down malfeasant wizards. But these aren't wizards. These are people playing with things that they shouldn't be playing with. That's scarier, right? Yeah, I've done it. Yeah, yeah. It never ends well. But yeah, this feels... They also might be kids. They also might be young people who might have been led down a direction that, that were manipulated. So let's keep that in mind, depending on what's going on. That's you know? a fair... Uh, we're going to kill some... They're not malfeasant wizards, <laughs> no? necessarily. Maybe some of them are, but maybe not all might, of them. You might be able to convince some of the, uh, the younger, less uh, indoctrinated you, um, individuals. You to, want to uh, cut off the head of the snake, right? So, whoever's behind this, we gotta take out. Behind this cloud? I meant more so the scheme at large. Oh, okay. but, as long but, as it's not a Hydra, because I have dealt with one of those before, and they're very tricky if you start cutting off their heads. So, oh, so let's just cool. be mindful of. You fought a Hydra? It was scary. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't wanna do that. Well, yeah, that's neat. <laughs> I'm gonna go in. Shall we go? Okay. I'll just walk through. Stepping? through the shroud. Immediately, a fetid odor strikes your nostrils. Smell of rot and awful. As you step onto bone that crunches beneath your feet and organ guts that squelch and squish, and pooling blood that drips and splashes. The room that you are in clearly has the stonework foundations of Altbrook University. But how deep you underground you are, this would be well below even the basements. Uh, into what almost appears like someone has built an additional layer of foundations, or perhaps the building that this is a an old sublevel that the present buildings were built on top of, mm. using the recovered masonry from perhaps an old version of these buildings. In this room, someone has installed fresh, thick steel bars forming into two into three separate prison cells. Despite the sturdiness of the steel, there are still rents and gashes in the bars. The gates of the cells thrown off. Whatever was contained in these cells, it didn't hold them. Mm. All manner of body parts, bones, and blood and guts of mostly livestock are strewn about, but certainly there are some that have some bits that are, despite their mauled fragments, are almost certainly human in origin. Do they look student-sized? The chamber 
has two exits, a pair of massive steel doors, like the inside of vault doors. In fact, you can see that there is the hinge of the vault uh, that of like the internal operations, but this is, but clearly that's the other side and the steel doors are covered in deep rents and gashes and pound marks, but the steel doors have held. The creatures in this chamber are first the hulking shadow being, but beside it is another strange monstrosity. It is an amalgamation of bone bolted together with twisted metal and ropes and welding of sinew and flesh. Two massive sets of wings made from stretched human skin sprout out of its back and it carries something not dissimilar to what we would call a man catcher, which is one of those long spears that has almost a collar ar around the edge of it that you would use to drive at someone and it would grab, like hit them around the neck. Mm. Mm. Um, and dangling from its body are all manner of chains and flesh hooks and netting. Um, there are in the room several other chains and things that have ripped out of the walls barely contained and as you and uh, you and as you enter into the room you see the other large hulking creatures just finishing tearing apart the baboon <laughs> <laughs> found him you it should go without saying but you should roll with it for initiative oh my gosh Pluto <clears throat> did you do okay 18 <gasps> thank goodness you unarmored beauty <laughs> ready uh, seven. Okay. Three times. Pluto? Or sorry, Sebastian? Four. Okay. Bravely charging forth. Pluto, you are the first to act. With Ignatius on, I, and the cell door is off. Oh, and I should note one last thing. The, the flying, the, the winged bone creature also has a its spine has been elongated into a tail that ends in something that looks like it's a construction of sharpened bone and metal that resembles a scorpion stinger. I run at that thing. <laughs> okay. It uses its reaction to scorpion sting you. No! Oh, that's why he described it. I thought it was just for fun. Flavor. Uh, it gets a 13 to hit. That is a shield. <laughs> okay, deflecting it with shield, uh, you don't get hit with its paralytic poison. <laughs> I needed that. Because I get my reaction, right? Yeah. Okay, and then I I attack this horrible creature. My first attack, I get a 23 to hit. Whew. Um, you, as you charge towards it, the shimmering energy of the shield protecting you from its lashing tail, you cleave into its body with Ignatius. Whatever fiendish magic has bound this thing together, Ignatius flares to life, and you hear the resounding cry out of, Abomination! The light destroys you! Resounds out from, uh, from Ignatius. And everyone can hear that, right? Not just me? <laughs> it's not just Typically, you ju just you hear Ignatius. <laughs> Darn it. Guys, you said some really cool stuff. Um, and then make a strength save DC 18. I fail. He falls on the ground. He's prone. And takes an additional- How much damage from the first shot? In total, 10, 37 damage with the okay. trip attack. And I don't think, I don't think my kidnapper has taken any damage at all, despite having been in three combats <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> okay. And now advantage? Yep. Oh, baby. Um, 21? Also a hit. And uh, 31. Knocking this massive creature onto its ground, it clatters against the stone, the metal and bone uh, chiming as it does so. And as its wings flitter to try to right it, you drive your blade down. For an additional 35 damage. Okay. And another uh, 
31 damage. It is very bloody. Oh, God. And I'm driving Ignatius into this. Uh... Final point, as you charge towards it, you did move through the reach of the kidnapper. Oh. So it will get a reaction attack against you as well. Through the bars? Oh yeah, the, its long fingers kind of extend out <laughs> no. as it does so. So it it, it gets an, it does hit you for thirty one damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and you know what? Just because of that, I'm gonna take out my aggression on this creature. Um, it's prone. I want it to make a, another strength saving throw. I fail. It is grappled by me now. Okay. And takes an additional nine damage. Okay, it is still alive. It's so I'm, I'm, I'm on the ground on top of it and I'm stabbing it with an issue. All right. <laughs> it flutters to its feet. It's its turn. Uh-oh. Oh. It's Stinger. Uh-oh. Bounds around. Getting a 12 to hit. 13, but also shield. Block it. Okay. And then it attacks. Shield's still going, right? It's uh, uh, Until the your end of my next turn? Yeah. Yeah. I do get a 19 to hit. The other attack is That nice. definitely hits. So that is only, go its claws are far more feeble. It's only 10 damage. Woo. Rudy, we are over to you. Um. I've got this one. <laughs> and he's trying to stab me with his tail. <laughs> I am going to try. I want to see if this works. Um, Note the holes as well in the. There, yeah. Oh, there's... oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what? I'm gonna try casting from my lunar axe moonbeam on it. Um, I want to see if the potential radiant damage angers on it. Which one? On the the kidnapper. Okay. The uh, what kind of saving kidnapper. throw do I make? It is a Constitution saving throw. I get a 13. Um, 15. Okay, I fail. Following spell is spell DC. 15, yep. Okay, so 2d10 radiant damage. Burn. Um, five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fun. <laughs> um, it is vulnerable to radiant damage. Um, so that turns the five damage into 10 damage. Yay! Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go add some hits. Um, I just want to It's not a shape changer, right? No. Okay. Um, what you see is what you get. I just want to see if it so shape enters the spell's area for the first time or or starts its turn. Yeah, that, that, okay. it, its turn is coming up next, so okay. that would be... Sweet. Um, and then I think I'm going to, using my bonus action, just shift into my wolfish form just to get some temporary hit points. Um, there. And that's it. All right, the kidnapper's gonna go for Sebastian. No. Reaching through no. the cage bars. It <laughs> oh. attacks Sebastian for a 20 to hit. Can we get some rad more radiant damage? Yep, 20 hits. And a 14 to hit. Uh, I'm gonna cast shield. Does that block both? No. Okay, so you still take 31 points of damage, 10 of which is necrotic, and you are pulled towards the bars. And uh -oh. you are grabbed, but not grappled, but not restrained. All right. It is your turn, Sebastian. So it pulls me in towards yeah. the bars. I'm locking eyes with it. And I say, you were merely, no wait, what? You merely adopted the darkness. <laughs> I was born in it. And as I'm locking eyes with him, a portal opens behind him and Reaper leaps out. Yeah. Yeah, get him. And so Reaper's gonna attack him from behind. Am I technically within five feet of him now? Yeah. So Reaper leaps out with his pack tactics and is going to attack him. 22 to hit. Reaper strikes true. Uh, doing 15 damage. Okay. Or 14, sorry. Okay. And then I'm going to cast Hold Monster on him. Okay, I have to make a Wisdom saving throw with disadvantage. Yes. <gasps> Drum roll. Yes. Uh, I get a 15. 
You are, so Reaper leaps out of the portal and all of the shadows in the room wrap themselves around like tendrils, wrapping and Turned pulling Turned 25 the into a 15. Arms. That was very relevant. And Reaper, Reaper kind of backs up out of the moonbeam. Okay. As he's still holding, like I'm not grappled, so can I back up as well now that he's... Yeah, yeah. All right, so... <laughs> just walk away. Reaper and I just move out of the moonbeam area and he's now held by shadows in, in the moonbeam. And that's uh, that's my turn. <laughs> it's a weird statement. Pluto, yeah. it is your turn. I uh, keep beating up this abomination, this horrible mutant. Uh, I get a thirty-two to oh, hit. Oh yeah, nice. Um, I'm gonna see if I kill it for nine, ten, eleven, seven, twenty-seven damage. That destroys it. I drive Ignatius into its uh, horribleness. Good job, man. You took that on yourself with no armor. And as you do, it collapses into a pile of bone, steel, and flesh. And I turn to the um, stunned creature, and I'm going to run into the cell and begin to... Okay. (laughs) So these will automatically be crits. So crit and crit. Um, Let's see how much damage... And this is radiant, right? Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure vulnerable to radiant damage, critical hits. Do we get it? Do you want to know the numbers for your own <laughs> ego? You know, no. You know what? Some things are best left unsaid. <laughs> Driving it, pulled by shadow, <laughs> Ignatius simply cleaves it in twain. It's like, this is like a three-way combo. Like, it's held by shadows, moonbeam shining yeah. down on it, reapers gnawing at it, and you just come in. I'm going to slowly drive Ignatius up into its torso and 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 just and let it emanate and just kind Her- of, yeah. It's just radiant right. energy. Mm-hmm. The horrific beast is destroyed. Um, Reaper takes what remains of it and drags it through the portal into hell. That's awesome. Okay. The room goes quiet. I begin to fashion a cheap suit of armor from the corpse of the horrible cool flesh creature. With 10 minutes of work, yes. I'm going to say you can scavenge something up that is the equivalent of hide armor. Yeah. Mm. And I also want are so, you just you're just wearing its dead body like it? Like it has plates that armored it. Both these creatures did. So and I wear them just, coolly, like on my. By shoulder. just taking some of your clothing and like some belts and some whatever you can scavenge together, yeah. you can. I, I'll I'll give you that. Yeah, it's like yeah. a Bruce Campbell suiting up montage. Yeah. With, <laughs> shh, shh. Okay. And uh, groovy. I also want to try the. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up the tail, because that's like poison. It's got poison on the tail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna keep that for later. That's gonna come in handy. Put it in the bag of holding. What you can actually see is that the tail has a vial that is the source of the poison. Like it has to be refilled. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Take that off. Don't leave the this. tail. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna. Yeah. And, and, mm-hmm. Oh, in the applicator, like yeah. the part that's like. It is at that point. As you examining it more closely, it is there is actually a syringe style applicator in it. Like had you been hit by it and whatever is in there, um, even just like tapping your finger to, to the substance, you feel your finger go numb. Like it's an extremely potent paralytic. Mm. Yeah. Keep that for sure. Reaper, bye-bye. All right, shall we move on and see if we can find the source of these Creatures. Do you think that this, like I'm getting the vibe that something was caged down here mm. and then became uncaged. Was it that thing you fought or was it something else? It could have been both. There's, I'm getting this thing that the whole couldn't control themselves. Yeah. Couldn't control what they're taking care of. We might find some horribleness when we go through this. They're definitely wow. uh they're playing with things that they have no control over and they've lost control and yeah. now it's kidnapping students. This guy who we have named the kidnapper tried to kidnap both of us. I assume if somebody's responsible for taking students, 
it's this it's well he's not here anymore because he's in hell and also disappeared from radiant damage but the thing that was formerly here yeah i think we should uh just proceed with caution also look at my new armor there's like blood <laughs> like running to them <laughs> like chunks of I just come over and I press the digitator a bit, be like, mostly the smell. <laughs> Please get rid of the smell. I it need is, to clean this a bit if we're gonna move on bad, <laughs> together. Bad, man. Pluto, it's um, I'm glad to see you're well armored, but you look horrifying. <laughs> yeah, I'm going and I'm smearing it under my eyes. Um, green gross. war paint. So gross. The hunt I want is to on. Explore these doors. These locked. Are they both locked? Yes. They. They. These are vault doors. Whatever doors were originally here, th these are, A, they immediately strike you as a newer construction, mm. and B, they have taken a punishment from these creatures, but held fast. Can I, um, at least on the door that I'm in front of, like, gauge whether there's any magic associated, so like arcane lock? Uh, give me an arcana check. Two. From this side, you cannot tell. Mm. Are there any, is it airtight? Yes. Um, I can lock things, but I cannot unlock things. I was going to try to polymorph my way through it, but I need, I need, I need a cockroach mm -hmm. hole. Wait! No, the walls here are stone. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, going next to the door. It's brickwork, right? Any cracks or holes or or like breaks in the wall give me an investigation check wait hold on there's a new feature that i keep forgetting about you can use a sorcery point to reroll yeah i'm gonna do that 22. okay you tap around and investigating the doors themselves the creatures have very thoroughly been breaking, trying to break their way out of this room. And the breach on the opposite side represented the weakest point that these creatures found themselves. So a lot of effort has been taken to keep them in here. That said, from the mechanics on both the doors that you can see, on, at least on this side, um, everything is designed to keep something in this room from getting out of it. But it's possible that the doors could be opened easily from the other side. But also specifically, if it's an older building, I'm looking like cockroaches can get into very small cracks and holes. Mm -hmm. The walls, I was investigating the walls. Are there no cracks, no holes? Is it pretty sealed in here? There are cracks and holes that insects could probably get through whether or not those connect to their like how, where they're going to lead to whether they're going to be smaller tunnels or not would be a bit of a gambit C yeah C is there like a keyhole on this door on this side or no is it solid there is the impression of the opposite side of like the vault wheel that would open this door mm -hmm. um but it has been reinforced on this side okay yeah what if you are these doors magical? Did we find that out? It's so. possible Not the doors me. have been magically reinforced. Is the ground worked stone? Yes. Is, uh, I know you can teleport to places you can see. We don't have any teleportation to places we can, well, you kind of do, but you have to know where you're going. I can teleport to a place I don't know. What if we... But it could kill us. What if we leave the sanctum, go back into the tunnels, and tunnel up our own way and find out what the building is? Mm. We can go the other way. All right, yeah. Like, essentially go out and then straight up. Yeah. Okay. Because we're, we're, we're at the foundation of... Like, we crossed a barrier between, like... Mm -hmm. Building and non building. Made and not made. So, what if we just went along the edge of the building, whatever's down here, and we would obviously come up eventually? Because I don't think we're that deep. Mm. Sebastian, the only thing that you can surmise, though, and this is a thing, thing worth noting, is that if this building has been warded with private sanctum, 
you can teleport within the area of the private sanctum, but you won't wouldn't be able to teleport from outside in. Mm. Right. So if you're outside, if you're outside the perimeter of the private sanctum, teleporting into the area wouldn't be possible. Because you can dimension but you can teleport door past the door. Yes, you can dimension door past the door. Yeah. Because I can use your mother's cape, and I could dimension door to the other side of the door. And, and then you... and then open the yeah, vault. Yeah. Um, okay. As long as the door, like, as long as I guess it's not like. I mean. Warlock, There's maybe? a. I can take two of us. Uh, who's who's the? Do best? you also have dimension door? I have dimension. Door. Okay, so you have two people that can cast dimension. Oh, door. Okay. I mean, theoretically, these doors lead to a hallway. So if we just go like two feet past the door, we should be okay. You go on the other side of the door, now where which, you think there would be. Which door? Hmm. Hmm. Left or right? Pluto. Dealer's choice. Which uh, which one of your arms do you like more? Oh, the right one. All right. That it is. So much beefier and stronger. You know, I'm a pretty big fan of your right arm too. Yeah. And I, thing. I put my hand on Rudy's shoulder and I'm gonna teleport us like Whee! 10 feet. Okay, you emerge in the other side of a hallway. You can tell that this hall continues to the other direction, but there has been an intentional collapse in this hall, separating it, separating the two doors from one another that lead out. But on the opposite side, there is the vault door with the vault to open, to unwind it. And arranged on the wall are a variety of long spears and applicators that appear to be arranged to incapacitate whatever is on the other side. And there is a lever that attached to what looks like a tank. And it simply says, is labeled underneath, um, emergency purge. Oh, I'm tempted. Um... <laughs> But wait. Can we get you Pluto hear, out you first? Hear soft knocking. <laughs> I, I you. <laughs> I will open. It. I try to open it. and I'm like, hey. <laughs> Rudy. I'm like a sad. <laughs> and I open. Okay, you the open the door. And Pluto is able to come through. Should we hey. take some of these things on the wall? Okay, uh, this is interesting though. We killed two things. Mm -hmm. There's three cells. Yeah. Hmm. I think we should lock the door behind us. Agreed. <laughs> so the rest of the hallway continues quite down quite a ways, um, leading off to four separate doors into four separate chambers. Um, before we go on, shall we do some healing? Y'all look a little bit tired. I, can, I got one more charge on my axe and is i got a, a bunch of greater healing potions i can give you i think we're um i look down and i'm like oh is this my blood <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so i'm hmm. gonna give pluto three of my greater healing potions okay and i'm Ooh. gonna cast um with my last s slots on my lunar axe um one more uh aura of vitality giving it all to sebastian and that's 70. I think I think seventy yeah, is like the maximum um, in a minute. What about a short rest? Is that worth exploring? Do we have before time? Before I do. <laughs> yeah, before you do all that, is I mean, it I can worth still, yeah. exploring? Uh, How long is a short rest? An, an hour. An hour. Do we have an hour to kill? Do we Depends have on the risk that you want to take. Kidnapper to kill. I mean, yeah. we killed the kidnapper. Just an element of surprise. Because we would get action surges. Yeah. We get super. Do you have a way of secure finding a secure place or securing your? I guess you can't cast. Uh, can you cast like a, a tiny hut inside of yeah. a private sanctum? Yep. I mean, I'm guys. just throwing out the idea. I I'm happy with the healing. I'm open. You guys let me know. I mean, short rest doesn't do a whole lot for me, so it's up to you guys if you want those action surges and to get your... 
I need a lot. I, I don't do short naps. I only take beauty sleeps. <laughs> yeah. I'm worried we've caused yeah. enough commotion that maybe okay, we that's, need to move on. But if you need it, we can stop. No, no, no. We can figure it out. Do you want four greater healing potions? Will that help? No, no, no. Are you sure? It, it, it was more about the other stuff. Okay. Okay. Adjust my inventory. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. We uh we really run out of healing potions a lot. I still have two left. Just in case. It's insane. Um, it's insane to me. I Well then, as you patch your wounds and embark down this long and ominous hallway, investigating the bowels under Altbrook University. I think that's a good place for us to wrap up for now. <gasps> we'll continue next time. Oh boy! I'm gonna stab something with its own poison. Oh yeah, we we grab all. The, there's the sticks with the vials on the mm -hmm. end, right? Pluto, carry all of these. <laughs> oh, can I use them as javelins? No, <laughs> Darn you it. but you can use them. In order to use these properly, the creature needs to be grappled, restrained, or in some way, shape, or form prevented, like, held in some way, and then you can use your action to administer them. A creature that is moving, that isn't, like, that has full their, their full faculties, it's too delicate to, like, the applicator will break if you try it. Try. But I could use one of my attacks as a grapple, mm -hmm. and then I could grapple it and then stick it. Like, yes, if you're, if you have a creature grabbed, Otherwise, um, basically, if you try to use these against a creature that isn't grabbed or restrained in some way, the attacks are all done with disadvantage. Okay. Yeah. We never made it to the chemistry lab. What'd you say? To the what? The, the show's over. I'm not in character anymore. Oh. <laughs> Kelly knows the word chemistry. <laughs> Sebastian okay. does. I don't understand the word. <laughs> Well, a big thank you to our cast, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for playing tonight. We'll be back with more next time. And a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his incredible work behind the scenes. Thank you, Kyle. We love you. And a huge thank you to our yeah, Dungeon Master, wow. Monty Martin, yes. for running uh, this schoolyard romp that's <laughs> turned into an underground horror show. Uh, thank you. We thank appreciate you. it. That's amazing. So good. And thank you to some incredible, uh, talented artists who uh, have allowed us to use some incredible assets in our game tonight. We have graciously, graciously been given permission to use these in our tabletop games. And we encourage you to check out some of these amazing creators and support them. Uh, a lot of the terrain is by Dwarven Forge. Yes, yeah, all Dwarven Forge. Dwarven Forge, amazing. Uh, miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids. Uh, with uh, player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot and music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community supporting our work. If you want to join and support the channel, follow the links in the description below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons, so if you are jumping on our Patreon, make sure to hop onto the Discord and chat with us about all things D&D, Drakenheim, TTRPG, anything else. You can also join in on our writer's rooms and Q&As as well. And of course, we've got new content dropping all the time on YouTube as well for our regular shows. You can check that out on the Dungeon Dudes YouTube channel. And be sure to join us next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time as we decide the fate of Drakenheim.